I'm reading the opening section from my new book, Bite Your Friends. My Mother's Scars. Those scars would fetch you top dollar in a bordello. The man had seized hold of my mother's inner wrist and was reading its fierce embroidery like a fortune. My mother laughed. They were seated next to each other at a dinner party. She was intrigued by the audacity of his come on. My mother's body was a house of pain, of wounds left by medical technology. The wrist-sized railroad tracks were in fact scars from the tubes that had hooked her up to a dialysis machine when she had kidney failure. The leg that had been scooped out like an abandoned strip mine was where a melanoma had been removed. My mother was proud of her tiny wrists, amused that her dinner partner mistakenly assumed their outsized scars, like a child's first attempt at cross stitch, were testament to a botched suicide. It was New York in the late 1960s when dinner parties were a lot more fun. My family lived in an apartment on Park Avenue with a gold Marilyn Monroe borrowed in the living room alongside an alabaster panther from a Delphic temple looted. As a little kid, I often couldn't sleep at night and the not sleeping sometimes got too much for me. On the nights when my parents stayed home, the nights when they didn't go out to parties, I'd go barreling down the long dark corridor into their room and beg my mother to come back to my bed till I fell asleep. Some nights, when I'd come pestering them one time too many, my father would feed me half a mill town to blast me into unconsciousness. But more often, my mother would come sit on my bed in the dark, stroke my back with her long, cool fingernails, and tell me stories. Her stories were of poets and con men, strippers and movie stars, and they slipped into my bloodstream and fed the stories I'm telling you now. The night after the dinner party at which her neighbor commented on her mutilated wrist, my mother curled up beside me in the insomniac dark and repeated to me laughing what he'd said. Those scars would fetch you top dollar in a bordello. I was eight, maybe nine at the time. And although I had a surprisingly large vocabulary when it came to sex, this sentence made no psychological sense to me whatsoever. My mother was a lot worldlier than me. Anything perverse, anything creepy, anything offensive to conventional propriety was right up her street. Having a body at all was problematic to her, but the scars she inhabited with a sardonic cool. The book is um, actually, it's about the lives of different characters throughout history, um, saints, early Christian martyrs, sort of Greek philosophers, all the way through to political philosophers and uh, contemporary artists, conceptual artists. And it sort of looks at people who used their bodies as a site of political protest, resistance, kind of to state tyranny or to society. I got the idea, it sort of developed without my even knowing what I was doing. I wrote a long piece for the New York Times Magazine about this um, Russian protest artist, Pyotr Pavlensky, whose sort of most famous act was sitting naked in the middle of Red Square and nailing his scrotum to the paving stones. Uh, and this very, very, very extreme act of sort of suffering and protest kind of made me think about the nature of certain kinds of bravery, political resistance, and how, you know, the kind of lineage from early, early, early martyrs, early saints, you know, all, all the way through to people fighting tyranny today. And then I sort of added this funny little, you know, what, what does this mean to me? And added this through line of, you know, my mother's body, my own body, my sort of history to my own sort of personal history. And that's, um, that's how it, that's how it came to be.